Welcome to another video. If you have been enjoying the video so far and you want to be a part of deciding which topics I go over next, be sure to join the Patreon at Dr. Leo Venus. There is a link in the description box. You get to have early access to the videos as well as, like I said, decide which video topics you go over next and you support this channel. So I appreciate it very much. Now, let's go on to the topic at hand today, which is Fasting. I like to start any discussion about fasting by asking a very interesting question in today's world and that is Have you ever gone a whole day from waking up to going to bed without eating any food whatsoever? The vast majority of people especially in today's Western world of abundance will say no Definitely not. I don't want to starve, right? I would be starving if I went a whole day without food Now let me ask you another question. How long do you think the average human being can go without food? The answer to that question is actually two months on average. Some people can go much longer. But anyways, enough rambling. I like to start with, okay, food. If you're eating food, you're going to be in an anabolic state. If you're not eating food, you're going to be in a catabolic state. Now this is very oversimplistic, but these are the two main processes that are going to be going on. In an anabolic state, you have an abundance of fuel. So you can use this fuel to do a lot of things. Whereas in a catabolic state, you're actually going to be running on fats, you're going to be running on proteins, on ketones, your brain is going to be running on ketones. Ketones can actually also suppress your appetite, which is why a lot of people, when they go a long time without food, they're actually less hungry than when they're eating many meals every single day. Another interesting thing about the human body. Now let's go a little deeper into the actual metabolism in these two states between fasting and eating and see how these metabolic processes, these cellular processes are actually impacting our health. Now, obviously the complete picture is going to be very complex. There are a ton of transcription factors, which are proteins that impact our gene expression, as well as lots of other metabolites that make this a very, very convoluted picture. But in order to make this a little bit more organized, as well as not bore any of you who aren't biochemists. I'm going to be simplifying into IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor 1 and mTOR or mammalian target of rapamycin because these are two very central molecules that are implicated in these processes and impact so much from insulin sensitivity to inflammation to cancer to growth. So let's compare and contrast the sides and see what is going on on each side of this process. So when we're in a catabolic state, we actually decrease the IGF-1 levels and we inhibit mTOR, meaning all the downstream effects of these molecules are going to be at a lower state than if we are in anabolism where we actually increase IGF-1 levels and we stimulate mTOR. You may have heard the name mTOR before because it is actually implicated in a vast number of different diseases and therefore being able to regulate mTOR through something as fasting can have huge therapeutic benefits. So first let's go over the metabolic effects on this side of the table, on the fasting side, when we have down-regulated IGF-1 and we are inhibiting mTOR. So first of all, we're gonna have increased autophagy, which essentially means that cells gobble themselves up, which makes a lot of their resources, their proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates available for recycling. We also have increased antioxidant defenses, this is obviously also a very good thing because we have a lot of oxidative stressors around the body. It can damage our blood vessels, it can damage our cells, it can damage our DNA. And so having more defense against these stressors is a very good thing. We also have increased cellular and DNA repair. I don't think I need to explain whether or not that is a good thing. We have decreased cell division, so it makes sense. We have less energy to go on, so we're going to make sure we're not just constantly dividing and building. And then last but not least, we have decreased inflammation, which is a very, very positive thing. As you probably know, inflammation is a very, very central aspect of almost any disease in medicine. So being able to decrease inflammation is a very good thing. Let's take a look at the other side of the table. So here we have, like I said, increased IGF-1 levels and we're stimulating mTOR. The metabolic effects that we're going to have here, we're going to decrease autophagy. We are going to increase cell division. We are going to increase protein synthesis and we're going to increase inflammation. Now, if you're just looking at these things and you're thinking, do I recognize that somewhere? You may be right that this does sound a lot like one of the most talked about diseases in the world, which is cancer. Now, before we go any further, let me just remind you that these are two processes that are essential for life. One is not good or bad. We need both of them for a healthy life. 
So the problem is when we come into imbalance, when we are eating all the time, we are constantly turning these pathways on, that's when we run into problems. At the same time, I'm not recommending that we never eat and we just starve ourselves because this is not a way to live either. We need to have a balance of both of these. And hopefully this video can help to resort or readjust the beliefs that some of you have in terms of how important it is to eat all the time because most of us have a slightly unrealistic due to marketing or the food industry or whatever it is, we have sort of an unrealistic expectation of how important it is to eat all the time. So with that being said, and not villainizing one or the other, let's go over the diseases that are associated with having these anabolic pathways turn on all the time. Cancer is one of them, but we also have everything from heart disease, high blood pressure, inflammatory diseases, and aging. Especially in the Western world today, where we tend to have an imbalance towards this side, most of us are hanging out a little bit too long in this anabolic side, we see that a lot of people benefit from going to the fasting side especially when we're talking about these lifestyle diseases, which are some of the most common problems we have in healthcare today. And it might come as no surprise in that some of the best clinical evidence and data we have and the best results we have for treating things such as blood pressure, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and more, actually come from data from fasting trials, fasting clinics around the world that have been doing these sorts of interventions for a very, very long time. In fact, different forms of caloric restriction and fasting have even been shown to prolong human life, prolong your lifespan. So it is definitely quite obvious from a scientific point of view that you would do well to try to balance your life with a little bit of this side as well as the anabolic side. We need both in our lives. If you are interested in learning a little bit about my fasting routine, I actually have an ebook where I share all of my lifestyle advices that I follow in my own life. If you're interested in that, you can send me an email at leovenus at gmail.com. Anyways, that is going to be it for today's video. This is a super fascinating topic. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to check out my Patreon, like I said, if you want to support this channel or be a part of deciding which topics we go over next. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.